Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Frederick Bertley. I am the president and CEO of COSI, and it's a pleasure to host the second incredible COSI Connects Live Color of Science digital presentation. Again, Dr. Frederick Bertley, president and CEO of COSI. This is the Color of Science, our monthly presentation, where we showcase amazing people, persons of color from all kinds of spaces, you know, different races, religions, gender, et cetera. We launched it last month in December with none other than Dr. Kathy Sullivan, who is extraordinaire, astronaut, head of NOAA, Guinness Book World Record holder, the first person to go in space and go to the deepest places in the ocean. Incredible woman. You think you can't top that. We managed to do that today because boy, do we have an interview for you and an incredible person to feature. Um, before I get to that, again, this is COSI Connects Live, connecting you to a digital universe of science. Go to COSI Connects Live, go to COSI.org, log on, click on incredible resources, all for free. Enjoy that, bringing science, engaging programs to where you live, learn, and lounge. Um, with that, the Color of Science, our signature diversity inclusion program, is brought to you by a few people, so I have to do my housekeeping. Presenting sponsor, L Brands Foundation, lead funder, the Curtis T. and Beverly Cheeks Jewel Family Fund, and additional sponsors, CAS, which you'll hear about today, Honda, and KeyBank. And so on behalf of all of us at COSI, I really want to thank you so much for supporting this program. It's important that we bring this diversity and equity program for free to everyone. So thank you sponsors for making this possible. With that, I'm gonna jump right into today's special guest. His name is Caleb Anderson. And before I say anything else, I'm just gonna play um, something specific, share my screen real quick. For new this morning, meet a kid genius. Okay, that's Caleb Anderson when he was two. I was very excited to tell you about this. <laughs> Counting fractions. Did I say he was two? Mm -hmm. Counting fractions and doing sign language. Mm -hmm. We're just going to stop right there. Wow. Well, guess what, friends? Caleb is now 12 and a sophomore in college. <laughs> He's the guest speaker for COSI's Color of Science series happening Thursday, which is tomorrow, and it is free. You can get this virtually, too. But Caleb's story is amazing. He could read by the time he was one recite the entire U.S. Constitution a year later, and says he plans to help send humans to Mars. I got a chance to ask Caleb what he hopes people will learn from him. People um, have the stereotype that, you know, you have to be, you know, um, some important looking person or, you know, some nerdy person to, you know, have, you know, to um, excel in rocket science. But, you know, that's not true. You know, as long as you say, oh, I think rockets are cool. I'd like to do that. You know, um, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin. It doesn't matter, you know, um, your sex. It, it doesn't matter anything. As long as you want to do it, you know, you can't do it. I thought about you. You know, I think you would just love, just love that, right? It doesn't matter about anything. Caleb's parents say they only recently decided to share his story to help people see kids of color in a different way and to really help change that narrative of when they see us. I mean, talk about brilliant guys. So, go ahead. I, I just want to say, definitely changes the conversation. I mean, a role model for his peers, but for parents. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. And, and did you get to ask him about Georgia Tech? Because I know that's one of the top contenders for him. Yeah. So he's a college sophomore <laughs> right now, um, taking college classes. He technically can't enroll until I think legally 16, but right. I got to meet the president and the president's like, I can welcome you to this college. So. And I wish I, I should have brought it in. I got the Sudoku that's been sitting on my desk for the longest time. I cannot figure out. I should have given it to you so you could, you could ask him, uh, just give me a hint so I can know where to move next. I'll say just fix it, right? Right. <laughs> he has two younger siblings too, so just imagine that family. But sure. we do have a link at tenuvi.com slash teacher link on how you can sign up for that uh, color of science tomorrow and we are grateful for smart kids like yes. that who are gonna you know do big things in our world how do you outdo the first series of having kathy sullivan you bring on this young man caleb anderson and i thought it was so important to play that video because he's received accolades from around the country he's been on every major national network but angela ann was so excited to hear that story that she wanted to cover it here too and so with that this is him as a young man in his miniature seat actually writing and reading. Incredible. This is his beautiful family. He has two younger siblings. They live in Georgia. 
This is um, him going to elementary school. And then the next shot is him his first day of college. Remember, he's a sophomore in college right now, and he's been admitted to the prestigious Georgia Tech. This is him on his tour at Georgia Tech just a while ago. This is him meeting with the president, Dr. Carrera, who's an incredible person at Georgia Tech. He's so excited to have the Georgia Institute of Technology, otherwise known as Georgia Tech, um, take this young man. Um, here he is in the presidential office, meeting with other distinguished folks and his family. Here's just a subset of some of the media's received. And by the way, Steve Harvey, who you all know well, a famous celebrity who supports a lot of really um, prodigious, incredible young kids, actually is gonna be paying his full ride to Georgia Tech and books and any other costs associated with that. So for all you kiddos online, and again, this is color of science bringing to you incredible people for everybody, but especially those kiddos in the K through 12 space, for all you kids online, your dreams can come true just like this young man. Um, here he is again with his family, some more coverage. And with that, I really wanna just get into bringing on right now, Mr. Caleb Anderson. Hello. Caleb, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing pretty good, you know. Um, really excited to, you know, talk to you all. All right, that, that's terrific. Now, before I start to ask you some questions, um, I just want to make it clear for the audience. I promise you today that they will be a genius on Cosi's Color of Science program. And just to clarify, he referenced nerd in his media appearance. The genius is not me. It is Mr. Caleb Anderson. So thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. You know, the, the audience saw your bio, your, your, your media is out there. There's all kinds of videos about you. You're just an incredible young man. I've had the pleasure of meeting you and your parents. Um, I got to ask, you know, you're reading and writing under one years old. You're figuring out how to do sign language under a year. You're doing fractions and other um, mathematical calculations at two and three years old. You're off to college as an 11 year old. You're now 12 years old. You're about to enter Georgia Tech. I know there's that 16 year old technology. You're just, you lived almost a full life and you're just incredibly bright. The, the first question I gotta ask you is, when did you realize you were different from other kids your age? Um. Well, you know, I think that um, one of the times, you know, I realized was um, one of my best friends, you know, at the time, um, his name was Joshua. And basically I was talking to him and he wasn't talking back, but we were like one years old. So um, I thought he hated me and I started crying and, and my dad was like, but he can't talk. <laughs> so um, that was one of the times. And um, I also, you know, I remember um, another time was when, you know, I was in um, first grade. I was two years old, and I remember the kids just towering over me, Every, you know, because these kids were like two to three times my age. So um, that, that was also an interesting experience. So, so wait a minute. This is incredible. Um, you're in the first grade, but you're two years old. That, that, that's really neat. So, so clearly you figured that out. So let me ask the reverse. When did your friends or, or the kids in, in the first grade, when did they realize that, wait a minute, this Caleb young man is really different? Well, um, I think it really depends on, you know, the environment. Um, if I just meet someone off the street and, you know, we make friends or whatever, they, they probably won't know for a few weeks, maybe months. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, I can hide it pretty well um because you know people will think i'm weird if you know they see this 12 year old kid going to college but you know a lot of my friends do know and you know basically you know um if i if i go to the same school as them they were like okay he's he's super smart because i'm two to three years younger than them so um i think those two those are the two instances you know when um my friends and my peers you know realize um you know um who i am and my intellect well, so I love that about you because, you know, again, I had the pleasure of meeting you a few times and you're very well-rounded, as they like to say, and you seem like a normal kid until you start doing differential equations and we're like, whoa, he's killer scary. But it sounds like your friends really accepted you. So, so I like that. But say a little more. You're able to keep these normal friendships with your friends, correct? Um, yeah, you know, a lot of my friends, we, you know, have a lot of things in common. 
um, a lot of our interests, a lot of our, um, you know, hobbies, but, you know, um, the only, they just see it as though, you know, I go to a different school than they do, which is, you know, pretty amazing. Yeah. And, and I love that. And for everybody listening, especially the younger kids, it's important to realize, especially in this age, just because there are differences between you and somebody else, you can still have loving and growing and incredible friendships. So I love that. So now let's get down into the weeds because your brain is like super high powered. I'm still intimidated doing this interview, but I got to ask sign language, learning sign language under one year of age. You know, most people learn to walk. Most people learn to talk. That's something you can do. You, you know, we're all pretty much going to do, but most of us don't learn sign language. How did you pick up sign language at such a young age? Um, it was all my mom, I think, in that sense. Um, she really, she really focused on me. Um, you know, she got her certificate in you know sign language, so she could teach me. And you know, um, she found you know a lot of um videos. You know, that I could watch in my spare time while she, she was cooking dinner or something like that. You mm -hmm. know, um, on sign language. You know, um, I think it's your baby can read. I think that's what it was called, but um. You know, so um, I think that was, you know, um, how I really learned sign language. Well, power to your mom. Let me give a shout out to Miss Anderson, um, because uh, I didn't have that baby could read book or, or that sign language book that you're talking about. So th th that is really cool. Um, and so it sounds like your parents, obviously, they recognize at, at a young age, um, you know, the talent you had and you kind of, you know, ran with it. Now that you're a little bit older, again, 12 years old, but now that you're a little bit older, do you ever have conversations with your parents about, hey, how do you guys react when I was reading and, and, and under one years of age or, or I'm talking to this other one-year-old baby and they're not looking back? You know, can you share a little bit more about that? Um, you know, I actually know most of these, I, I don't remember anything from that time. I, I actually know um, most of this stuff from, you know, my parents telling me these stories, and I think they were really to uplift me. Um, so, you know, they could show me that I, I was, I was good, I was special in a good way. So, um, yeah, I really think that, um, you know, that's where, you know, all these stories came from. But, you know, I think th their reaction, um, my dad actually didn't believe it for a <laughs> while, <laughs> because, you know, um, he was at work all he was at work you know supporting the family so he didn't really get to see too much of me mm -hmm. but um you know i think when my mom you know told him hey there's something different about Caleb um my dad was like there's something different about every kid it, it's normal <laughs> but um so well, well, well Caleb Caleb you're you, again you're the genius here i'm just the interviewer but i can give you one piece of information that i hope you remember Moms are always right, and dads like us often mess it up. So good for your mom, and, and glad, glad you called that up. Um, but with that, I got I gotta ask about I gotta ask about your college experience. So you're 12, you're already a sophomore in college, and I believe you want to be an aerospace engineer. What was it like to tour college and tour not just one, but to tour several colleges at 12 years old? Um You know, um, I tried to lay low, but, you know, I really kept my head high. I, I guess that's the best way to say it. You know, there are a lot of people on campus, you know, who didn't know about me. But, um, you know, when people did know about me, they they recognized that, you know, I was amazing, you know, that um, I could perform as well, if not better than them. And, um, you know, I think a lot of these kids also respected me. Not just for that, because, but, you know, because I was 12 and, you know, I was there. So, um, you know, I, I asked a lot of questions and, you know, it was really challenging. College is, you know, one of the hardest things that I've had to go through. Yeah. But, you know, um, I love risks and, you know, I love, you know, the harder something is for me um, or the harder something is for other people, the easier it is for me. And, mm -hmm. you know, the more fun it is for me. So I really think that, you know, um, th this challenge, you know, really helped um, my brain. And, you know, it really helped me as a person. No, that, that's fantastic. So thanks for sharing that about how the kids on college campuses 
kind of reacted to you and, and then befriended you and, and respected you. Can you share a little bit about the teachers and professors and, and go back even to elementary school? How do the teachers react to you? And now how in college, how are the professors reacting to you? Um, well, I really think it depends on the teacher. Um, and definitely in ele- definitely from, you know, um, elementary school to um, the end of middle school. Um, which for you was which for you was one month. <laughs> um, that was more like five years, a okay. decade, a decade even. Um, but you know, um, I think either um, the teachers were really amazing. They tried to support me. They didn't, you know, they didn't see me as someone different. They didn't seem they didn't care. You know, they saw my gift and they tried to uplift it, or they um, they didn't really see it as a gift. They more saw it as a curse. And, you know, they, they, um, they looked down on me and they were like, he can't do this. It's, it's, it's not right. So, you know, it was really 50, 50, but, you know, um, I've had some amazing teachers and some horrible teachers, but, you know, um, I think it all comes down to that. Good. Well, I'm really glad you have the parents you have, because they clearly supported you, especially if you had some teachers that were, were, were not as ideal as the other ones. So, okay, great. So you're at college now, you're a sophomore. What has been your favorite experience um, at college so far? Um, Favorite experience. Um, You know, I want to, um, there are a lot of stories. Um, I I think my, probably my favorite experience, um, I made this tie dye shirt. It was, it was, it was awesome. It's, it's still awesome. (laughs) I, I still have it. And, you know, um, they didn't have one in my size, so it would look like a dress on me. But, um, yeah, that was um, really awesome. And, you know, um, I've, ha- um, I've had a lot of good teachers there, um, you know, I've, and a lot of good students. You know, I've, um, I've learned a little bit about Dungeons and Dragons from there. I've, learned, I've played Super Smash Bros. there. And, you know, I once had this old teacher with a hook. <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> You're kidding, a like Captain Hook. Like, no, just, and he, it, it, but, you know, he was actually pretty nice, and, um, you know, even though I felt nervous around him at first, you know, I warmed up to him, and um, I've learned that all the, all the teachers that you think are going to be bad in college are really good, and vice versa. <laughs> That's so. interesting. That's really interesting. All right, well, the, the, the folks listening online will keep that in mind. So, um, you know, you have this incredible brain, you learn things really quick. One thing they talk about in education is learning styles. You know, does a person learn through reading, through listening, through video, music? If, if you had to guess what, what best learning style works for you? And then secondly, you know, what are your study habits? Okay, so um, what learning style works for me? Um, I'm I think I'm like more of an auditory learner, um, you know, um, and visual, you know, um, videos, you know, videos are my b- videos or lectures, you know, that's, I think that's where I re- really get, you know, a lot of my information from. Um, study habits, um, it really depends on the class, but um, it's usually, um, you know, if it's, um, I think I have like different study habits for di- different classes. For math, um, I usually try to go on you know YouTube or Khan Academy to you know try to find videos on you know the subject. And if I you know can't figure it out on my own, or um, I think for history, um, I usually end up writing a lot of notes for history, um, like three or four pages every class. So oh, wow. um, you know I usually use that um, you know as a study guide. Um, for English, um, you know, there are books I have to read, but I usually just wing it there. I'm, (laughs) I, I have, I have, my reading comprehension is pretty good. So I I think I I usually just wing it, but, um, you know, there are times that I do have to study for these tests and, um, if I don't study, I usually fail because, you know. (laughs) <laughs> that makes sense, honestly. Well, I, I'm really glad you shared that because, you know, look, by all accounts, you're a genius, but I love the message you're saying. 
whether your brain works at an incredible power or not, you still have to study, you still have to put in the time, you still have to do the work. And that's a great message. And you're a fantastic example of the importance of doing that. And you've also shared, you know, that sometimes you might not have done so good on a test, which is great. It makes the rest of us feel normal. So um, we got a real exciting special guest coming on soon. But before I go there, I got two more quick questions. For, well, two more questions for you. One, you want to be an aerospace engineer. Love that. You know, we're at COSI. We love space. We love NASA. We love all of that cool stuff. Why did you choose aerospace engineering as a field of study? Um, I'm really, I really like rockets. Um, you know, I really think these um, little missile looking things can, you know, take humans, you know, um, you know, past the atmosphere into space. So, you know, I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, these these weird shaped objects, you know, can um, actually propel, you know, um, humanity into, you know, a different age. Um, so, you know, I always thought that was interesting. And, um, you know, astronauts, you know, I always thought, you know, you know, these people got to the moon, but, you know, the aerospace engineers, they wouldn't have been able to do anything without them. You know, um, these, these people, you know, um, without you know if it, there's a slight misstep in the calculations if you um don't forget to carry the two you know um you could end up you know floating in space and you know um if there's a if there's a bolt in the wrong place you know you you could end up like the challenger so you know i really think that these people you know who um you know these are really the unsung heroes of you know the space industry um a lot of people would have died and a lot of people, you know, wouldn't have been able to make it, you know, to where, you know, um, they've, they've gone without these people. So I, you know, I really respect that. You know, Caleb, that, that's so fantastic. And, and while you may be 12 and short, that's really big of you because obviously with your brain, you could become an astronaut and be the face of the space program, but you're really respecting the genius and the talent of the men and women who work behind the scenes to make all these things possible. And so that, that's such a great, Great way to, to, to think about it. So well done. Um, at this point in time, I, I have to mention one of the great sponsors of this program is called CAS. And I just want to share who CAS is with all of you. So um, CAS is a division of the American Chemical Society. And it's got an amazing mission. It's to improve people's lives through the transforming, transforming power of chemistry. So leveraging chemistry and all the stuff connected to chemistry to transform people's lives. The world's biggest challenges, such as curing diseases or finding new energy sources, will be enabled by connecting scientific information and technology. CAS is a specialist in science by providing world-class scientific information solutions that power research and enable global innovation. Now, where is CAS, you might think? You might think it's in New York, you might think it's in DC, you might think it's in California. Well, right here in Central Ohio in Columbus, we have an embarrassment of riches incredible companies, incredible universities. There's a big football game happening Monday night to decide who's gonna be the national champions. Ohio State's one of those competitors, but that's also the city where CAS is. It's right here in Columbus, and it's now my pleasure to introduce the president and CEO of CAS, Manuel Santos Guzman, who is going to grace us with this presence. It's a special surprise for you, Caleb. You get to chat with this CEO of an incredible scientific firm. Mr. Uh, Guzman, floor is yours. Dr. Bertley, excellent pronunciation. If my mom was here, she'd give you a B plus for that. So excellent, excellent work there. Caleb, pleasure to meet you. I mean, I am uh, I am awe of your, of your talent and your skill, but I have a couple follow-up questions for you, if you don't mind, and we have a little chat. Uh, your interest in uh, aerospace, when did, did at, that exactly form for you? When did you understand or come to appreciate that that was an area you wanted to go into? Um, honestly, you know, um, in the very beginning, um, you know, I would, um, you know, um, my mom would teach me, you know, um, science and math and things like that, but I think I've always been drawn to science and especially, you know, space. Um, you know, I think that's, you know, where, where I really shined. And I mm -hmm. think that's where I really, you know, um, excelled. And that's what I really loved, um, you know. So, you know, ever since, you know, my mom showed me the little NASA kids website, I think that, you know, um, that's where, you know, I've been trying to, you know, 
get to you know i've i've been trying to you know be, be one of the people on this nasa kids website and mm -hmm. you know um so i think that's you know where i really got you know the inspiration for you know wanting to go into aerospace and a question and because i shared a similar interest my first career publication was to be an astronaut do you want to uh design the rocket or also fly in the rocket or one or the other or both um really both um, you know, it depends on where I'm flying to. Mars is a one-way trip. You know, I kind of like Earth, so mm -hmm. um, I'm not really sure if I went there. But I've, I do want to go to, you know, the moon. Um, I do, um, and I also want to, you know, design these rockets, you know, um, because, you know, um, if I don't have the courage, um, you know, to go to Mars, you know, I, I do want to, you know, at least contribute, you know, to um, Mars, Martian exploration. And I'm sure uh, during your career, you'll help make that one way trip into a round trip. I'm pretty confident of that. So other other scientific areas, other scientific domains that you, you're shown an interest in or uh, kind of discovered along your, your educational path? Um, other scientific areas? Um, I actually don't think so. Um, yeah. I think even though science is my favorite subject, subject you know, I really think that... Um, Aerospace is, you know, the only thing I really, really love about science. Um, not really chemistry, too much um, memorization, physics, Newton's three laws. Yeah. Um, well, well, we're, we're committed to helping you out with that chemistry side. So to the extent you are of age and there's an internship or a, a career that you're interested in with our organization, consider it, uh, consider it available. Now, I, I asked yeah. the question because obviously on the uh, space station, there's all kinds of research and science, uh, scientific activity being engaged in. So I'm curious to know what you're interested in, in some of that. Yeah, um, I honestly think chemistry is probably, you know, the best, you know, aside from on the aerospace. Um, you know, even though it's a lot of memorization, you know, it's how, um, you know, the, it's, you know, um, what the world is made of. And, um, you know, I really want to study that, you know, um, I like learning things about, you know, humanity as a whole. And I don't think you can understand humanity without understanding, you know, um, you know, um, the, what we're actually made of. Yeah, that's excellent insight. So, Caleb, outside your required studies for school, what what areas do you, you know, tend to read in or maybe do a little bit more research in your in your free time, your spare time? Um, what areas? Um, you know, I really like to read. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that's, you know, um, I, I usually read, you know, a book every night, um, you know, um, a, a, a chapter book, you know, every night and, um, fiction, nonfiction, is there a particular preference? What do you read for first? Um, I'm not really too big of a fan of nonfiction. Um, I've been reading the Alex Ryder series lately, um, this MI6 super spy 14 year old, it's, it's complicated, uh -huh. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I, I love fiction because, you know, I really think that you can do anything with fiction, um, science fiction, and I've read science fiction, I've read, um, fantasy, I've read, you know, um, you know, um, I, I don't know what the other genres are, but, yeah. you know, um, you know, I've read all sorts of fiction, um, even historical fiction, um, but because I think you can do anything with fiction because nonfiction is just like, you know, trying to tell the, trying to tell the story of someone's life. But I think fiction, you know, you are, you know, the person and, you know, in fiction, you can be anything. Yeah. And taking another question for you here and beyond your parents, oh, Dr. Bentley mentioned earlier teachers, which I assume many of them become role models for you. But what, what are some of your role models out there that you kind of admire some of their work or some of their discussion, some of their writings? Um, definitely Nikola Tesla. Um, you know, he create, he worked on the light bulb. He worked on, you know, the modern electricity system. And, you know, um, Thomas Edison basically stole that from him. But, you know, um, and, but, you know, he never gave up, you know, he, even though he knew this was going to happen, you know, he still um, worked, you know, further humanity. And I don't even know where we would be without him. And I really think um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, 
I think, you know, he's a black astrophysicist, a colored astrophysicist. So, you know, um, if he's, if he's, you know, where he is, you know, if he's super famous, you know, everybody knows who he is. Right. So it really inspires me to, you know, um, be the best I can be, you know, be like him. Mm -hmm. Do you have situations or opportunities to, you know, spend time with some of your peers and maybe educate them on some of the things you're, you're doing? Have you flipped that switch from being a student to potentially a, a teacher or an instructor? Um, Not at a formal level, but an informal level amongst friends or colleagues or peers. You know, I try to keep my school life away from my, you know, um, my social life. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, sometimes it does cross over. I have a friend who every time I hang out, we get into this hour long philosophical argument. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I, I try to, you know, um, try to be as normal as possible because, you um, you know, everybody has different gifts, but some people, you know, they, um, you know, it honestly comes, you know, when I do that, I'm usually end up bragging, <laughs> um, you know, about, you know, um, how smart I am. So, you know, I try, I try to stay away from that, but, um, you know, every once in a while there, you know, there are some things that, you know, I've taught some friends about, um, quadratic equations and things like that. So, you know, um, I think that, you know, I do end up being a teacher every once in a while, um, but, you know, I try to stray away from that. Yeah. And you have a clear kind of understanding of what you, you want your career to be. The, the pathway to getting there is interesting. I've seen one or two of your interviews you, where you talked about particular uh, places of employment or places where you wanted to get your education. Talk a little bit about that, what you've, uh, at least at this point, kind of concluded is your pathway uh, towards your career. Um, you know, you never really know what can happen, but um, I really think that I'm going to get my bachelor's and master's degree at Georgia Technical College, um, hopefully do an internship with Elon Musk, and, you know, go on to work, um, sorry, um, get my PhD at MIT, you know, go on to work for um, NASA or SpaceX, or even start up my own company um, oh, wow. you know, um, in the future. Oh, why don't we poke on that a little bit? We have a common interest there. So you, you, you have an interest potentially in maybe being a proprietor of your own organization or business? Um, you know, I really think that's later on in the future once I get, um, you know, more experience, you know, um, in the field, you know, after I get, you know, I'm finished with school. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, after, you know, I've worked at, um, you know, some of these aerospace companies for a longer period of time. But, um, you know, I think, if, you know, I see something and, you know, it's a good idea and I really think people will, you know, enjoy it and I really think people will go for it. Um, you know, I think, you know, I just started my own company and hopefully, you know, be the CEO. So you appreciate uh, being creative and innovative and something you want to pursue? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think um, creativity, you know, is um, the most important thing, you know, um, and for, you know, humanity itself, you know, I really think that, um, you know, everyone, you know, if you have the cap capacity to, you know, be creative, you know, mm -hmm. um, you can come up with ideas and, you know, you can um, further technology and, you know, by fur furthering technology, you, can, you further humanity and by furthering humanity, um, you know, you, you make the world better. And I really think that making the world a better place, you know, I think that's, um, you know, why we're here. Uh, excellent, excellent. Well said, well said. Um, any questions for me, potentially, that you may have an interest in uh, kind of understanding what we do or what I do? Um, yeah, I do have a few questions. Um, sure. I know you have a background in learning and education. Mm -hmm. um, how, how did that really prepare you for, you know, um, what you do now? Uh, that's, a, that's a good, a good, uh, very good question. I, I think, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, I think uh, what what ultimately puts you in a leadership position is your ability to acquire knowledge, right? And it all starts where you are right now in the lower schools and obviously right through college. Your ability to just acquire an education and acquire information has you prepared uh, ultimately for your career. But it doesn't really stop there. Uh, this concept of lifelong learning is legit. And once you start your career, those who ultimately uh, end up in a position, a leadership position, let's say, are the ones that truly commit, uh, not only through hard work, but the continued uh, process of educating themselves and getting better. And then when you couple hard work and kind of education with some of the things that you mentioned, maybe an ability to be creative and responsible, 
uh, and, and caring, it, it gets you in a situation you can have a leadership role. But the foundation of it, it really all starts with one's uh, ability to consume information, to educate themselves, not only in the academic environment, but staying committed to that once they get in the professional, professional space. Um, my next question is, how did you get into the sciences? Interesting. You know, my, I'm really a business person. I, my vocation, if you would, is actually finance and accounting. That's what I was trained in during my academic uh, career and then started to navigate my way through different industries. So the training that I have is actually portable. I was very fortunate seven years ago to be uh, uh, attracted to this organization, which is a science-based organization. So I'm not a scientist. I'm actually a business leader that has a fortunate opportunity to work for one of the largest uh, scientific information companies in the world. So I pretty much spend uh, my entire day, if you would, um, interacting with scientists, folks who are extremely creative, uh, extremely innovative, extremely committed to making the world a better place. And their skill sets coupled with mine, which are complementary, enable us to do what we do. Um, my last question is, you know, what do you do for fun? You know, what are your hobbies? <laughs> well, I, I believe it or not, this is actually fun. Uh, I, I could sum it up in, in one simple way. You know, you get to a point in, in your career, which you will, you know, with your strong academic background and your technical expertise, which you will acquire, you'll absolutely marry that up with ability to inspire other people to uh, enable their success. Uh, that's how I have fun you know, looking for ways to enable other people to achieve their goals and their potential. Whether I do that at work or I get an opportunity to engage with somebody like you to potentially say something that will enable you uh, to make some good choices in the future. Uh, that's what I like to do. I like to do that in my personal and my professional life. Yeah, I really believe, you know, doing, working and, you know, lo loving what you, lo loving what you do for work. You know, I think that's one of the most important things, you know, to be successful. Absolutely. I think that uh, there's a, an X factor, and I don't know if you scientists will be ever, ever be able to calibrate it, but you can do a job or you can uh, perform in a particular classroom, take a particular exam, but if there's a passion for what you're doing, you will do better. Um, I'm not quite sure what the algorithm is there that will calculate exactly what the, uh, the makeup of that uh, X factor is, but it's absolutely there. So to the extent you're following your passion, uh, congratulations to you. You will you will have great success. Thank you. Dr. Bertley, I can throw it back over to you for some closing words, but I appreciate the opportunity here. Absolutely, Mr. Guzman. A pleasure having you on. Thank you for CAS's support. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Manny Guzman. He's the president and CEO of CAS, which is an amazing company worldwide recognized right here from Columbus, Ohio. Their mission is to improve lives um, through the transforming power of chemistry, and I'll add science to that. Um, pleasure having you on. Um, I want to say, um, if you want to stick around behind the scenes in case we've got some questions, we'll you, that'll be great. Um, Caleb, I got to tell you, I know you're going to be an astrophysicist slash aerospace engineer um, who also is going to study chemistry. You just mentioned that. But the way you interviewed Mr. Guzman, incredible talent right there, my, my friend. So you got all kinds of careers um, that are opportunities. And I also want to say to the kids that are listening, uh, Mr. Guzman is the CEO of a science company, but he's not a scientist himself. He has a master's in business administration. And I say that just to say, whatever you study, if you go as far as you can in your field, you can have jobs in all kinds of disciplines. So keep that in mind. You're listening to The Color of Science, our digital edition, where once a month we interview an amazing person of color who explores the scientific world. Last month, we had Dr. Kathy Sullivan, famous astronaut. This month, we have someone who's gonna support the next set of famous astronauts, none other than 12-year-old genius, Caleb Anderson, who's been admitted to Georgia Tech. Um, um, university. So with that, um, Caleb, I'm going to get to the favorite part of my show, which is pulling questions from our audience. I can't even tell you how much stuff we have streaming on the side of my screen here. So I'm going to go back and forth. The first question, um, these are the first few ones that were actually submitted in anticipation of you coming on. That's how excited people were to meet you. So this is from Jules. Jules is seven years old, and he um, asks, what are your hobbies outside of school? Um, hobbies outside of school, um, I fence, I swim, 
I used to play soccer, but you know, I don't really anymore. Um, and I think, you know, um, I, you know, I watch anime. Um, I play with these Japanese toys called Beyblades. Um, I love collecting Transformers. Um, I think that's the first non-educational show um, that I've, you know, watched, honestly. Um, and, you know, I, I love messing around with Nerf guns, you know. Shooting people is fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think, you know, um, those are, you know, a few of my hobbies. I mean, that's fantastic. So, so again, honing in on the fact that you're still a 12-year-old boy. You love playing video games. You love shooting people with Nerf guns. Um, and you love anime and watching cartoons. Very, very cool. Second question comes from Jack M. I don't know Jack's age, but he asks, what's the best and worst parts of being so smart? Um, best parts? Um, either, you know, no one can really argue with me. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, I, every, every time, you know, someone makes a valid argument against me and I can't really go, um, you know, say anything back, I say, are you in college? I thought not. <laughs> That is a mic drop moment right there. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So what's what's so that's the best part. What's the worst part? Jack wants to know what's the worst part about being so smart. Um, it's a bit harder to make friends, you know, because it's a bit more awkward. But um, you know, I really think I can get around it. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, I interview a lot of people. You're so well adjusted. I have no worries of you making friends with people of any age. Um. All right. Now we have Amy from the Community Montessori School. She wants to know who are your personal role models. And what qualities do you see in them that you would like to develop further in yourself? Great question, Amy. Um, you know, I already said my role models. Yeah, but, um, I think the qualities are, you know, Nikola Tesla, um, never give up, you know, no matter the odds. Um, you know, um, you know, pe you know, um, even though it's been um like um hundreds of years or a hundred or so years, you know, um people you know, people are starting to recognize him for who he is. And, you know, um, I, I really think that, you know, even though it's um, posthumous, I, I did, definitely did not say that right. <laughs> but, you know. Um, don't worry, I, 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 won't, I won't correct you. I promise you that much. I will not correct you, so don't worry about it. <laughs> um, you know, people still recognize him. Um, again, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's a black astrophysicist and, you know, he made it and, you know, he never gave up and, um, you know, I'm not going to give up either. Okay, great. Now we have Emily. Um, she's a high school student from New Albany High School. She wants to know, how does it feel to have this spotlight on your journey? That's a really great question. All this fame, all this attention. How does that feel? Um, it feels pretty good, um, honestly. Um, you know, um, you know, I've been recognized, you know, um, you know, in schools and things like that, but I've never, you know, really been recognized in, you know, the nation, you know, even other parts of the world. So, you know, I, I really like that. Um, but uh, I think it's more, um, you know, my mom and my, my, my parents, you know, I think they, you know, um, are really like, my mom always shows that she doesn't want to be my secretary or something like that. Um, good, good, good. So, all right. So um, we got Tanya from Horizon Science Academy. Um, hope you can hear me. She wants to know what has been one of your fondest memories traveling to different colleges? Um, fondest memories. Traveling to different colleges, I really think that uh, the wind tunnel um, at Georgia Tech that was amazing. They were and they were you know building satellites there. There were this um, red light drone technology. Uh, they're really high tech. They're one of the best aerospace engineering schools in the country. Mm -hmm. So it's it's honestly kind of hard to get into there and the, and it's even harder to succeed there mm -hmm. but um i really i'm really excited 
Okay, very cool. So I'm going to go real quick because there's so many questions. I got to tell you, Caleb, there's so much interest in what you're talking about. Um, we have here at COSI, we also really love homeschool kids. So this is for Deb, who's being homeschooled. Um, what have you enjoyed during the pandemic and any suggestions for other kids? Can you repeat that, please? Um, Deb, who's being homeschooled, wants to know, what have you enjoyed doing during the pandemic? And, ah. any questions, and any suggestions for other kids? Well, we've had a cr pretty crazy year. Uh, we got goats <laughs> for the for a few um, uh, week for a few weeks. You know, we all we had to do was feed them and give them water. Mm -hmm. And we had a we have a ton of ivy. We had a ton of ivy in our backyard, and they just cleared it out. And <laughs> uh, so. Caleb, that's the best advice ever. For those of you who are having a tough time in the pandemic, man, get a few goats. They'll take care of your garden and you have fun feeding them and they end up being exactly. good pets. All right, now we have Chandra from Mount Vernon School. She says, I'm an eight-year-old navigating advanced courses. So she's kind of like you. How did you handle maintaining friendships when in classes with older peers? Well... Number one, um, I do have a phone, so you know I think that really helps with um, you know maintaining these friendships. Um, my mom is actually a friend, and you know when I'm friends with someone, my mom is usually friends with them. Okay. Um, she, you know, it's, it's usually more of a family friend than anything. Uh, so I think you know that helps, and um, you know I I do see them you know I have neighborhood friends I have church friends you know I have friends everywhere so I so you know I really think that you know the school you know doesn't really um, dictate too much yeah well I gotta tell you again I've said this earlier on the show you're, you're such a wonderful young man so I can totally see how you can make friends anywhere you go um, so now I'm looking at them uh, these are actually some of the chat questions so Lisa Hamilton wants to know have you ever played chess Yes. I'm Do you like good. chess? No, I'm not, I'm not good either. And the, the worst part is that even, I'm not good. I don't like it. And it's like the only game that can up your IQ. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is your IQ is so high, Caleb. You don't have to worry about it going higher. You're good to go. All right, going back to the questions. Um, so Ashley Wise wants to know, what is your daily schedule like? How much time do you spend on the screen? And so that might be on a computer screen, handheld device, or maybe even people filming you for shows. Uh, well, you know, since the break, I've been on the screen for for a very long time because I really, I really have this opportunity to do whatever I want. So I've been trying to catch up on some shows and things like that. But I'm. You, I'm usually only allowed to, you know, do have screen time um, the end of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, I and I and I do, you know, have, um, you know, I I'm usually on the screen, you know, other o other times for school. And lastly, uh, I I have interviews usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I'm usually, you know, um, on the screen a, a bit more then as well. Okay, very cool. So, so this is from Trisha, who's 10. Um, Trisha Honecker wants to know, is it fun for you in college? Yes, it's really fun. Um, you you, you heard the excitement on that answer, Trisha, so clearly you're liking it. It depends on how hard, how bad you want it and you're and you know the fact that um you know if you love learning if you love learning then college is a place for you um I, I would encourage you to skip as much grades as possible to get to college um because not only does that advance you uh, they also give you a lot of independence um i really don't know why high school and middle school is just a lot of busy work college isn't like that um but you know they're like um, little mother bird, but it is kind of like a little mother bird throwing its baby bird off the off the cliff, <laughs> out of the nest. You know, um, they just throw you out there, and you have to figure it out on your own. But you know, once you 
um you know you really figure it out you know you can fly you know it's 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 and it you know it ter- becomes really fun and um honestly you know a lot of people would probably do it again very cool well so so here's a question from from Kristen um dubiel um she, she we we know you speak english of course we know you speak or you you know how to sign um she wants to know are there any other languages that you can speak That's interesting. Well, I have spoken five or six languages in total. However, um, if you don't have anyone to practice these languages with, you don't speak them. So I've forgotten most of them except um, Spanish and English, of course. Um, I've spoken French, Haitian Creole, Mandarin Chinese, ASL, and then of course Spanish and English. That's six. That's six. Okay. Now speaking of Mandarin Chinese, I know you have two younger siblings. Um, I read somewhere or, or saw a video somewhere that, I mean, this is me asking, this is not from the chat, that one of your siblings actually sings in Mandarin or Cantonese. Is this true? And do you guys have conversations in Mandarin or Chinese in your house? We probably have. I don't think we have conversations in Mandarin. It's um, it's really different from these Latin languages. Um, it, you know, it's kind of like Japanese. It's not um, like there are syllables and things like that. There, every character means a different word, so it's 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 a bit different. So I don't think I honestly think one of the reasons I forgot it is because we haven't really spoken it too much. Um, God, great, great. Yeah. All right. Well, so Daniel Hauser wants to know: Do you find difficulty with people either being too intimidated by you, or discounting your ability due to your age? Well, the second one definitely. Um, people really discount my ability due to my age. You know, every situation. You know, every new school, every new teacher. I have to walk in there and I have to prove myself, and it's taken a toll on me you know i don't really like it but once they warm up to me they're like okay okay yeah he, he's smart but um you no know, there are um i don't really find difficulty with you know communicating or anything like that um with other people um it's more people you know have difficulty communicating with me got it got it. okay um and xiao wen zai wants to know, um, do you like art? We've been talking a lot about science and aerospace and technology. What do you think about art? Do you like it? Uh, it depends on the art. I did explain that, you know, I like cartoons and I like anime. So I, I do kind of like those um, those, those styles. Um, and I, I'm i not a big fan of modern art. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I kind of like Renaissance art a little bit more because it looks like people. Um, I, I'm not really a fan of the abstract, you know, style, but, um, you know, to each his own. Okay, great. Uh, Marisol Rodriguez, this is going to be my second to last question. Mary, Marisol Rodriguez um, wants to know, was second grade fun or not? And I'm guessing she's in second grade. So was second grade fun or not? Uh, second grade was amazing for me because remember how I, you know, I, I did say, not remember, um, I did say, you know, I had a lot of good teachers and I had a lot of bad teachers. My second grade teacher was my best teacher, mm-hmm. period. Um, why, why? What made them such a good teacher? Well, number one, I think she was a teacher that respected me the most. Um, and, you know, even, and I think she really, I, I think she was kinder to me, especially since I was, you know, like, I'm really young. So um, I didn't think she put as much pressure on me as, you know, some of the other teachers. Um, you know, I do love my other teachers. You know, they were really awesome. But I really think the second te- the, my second grade teacher was the one that tried to push me the most. And, you know, she didn't shove me. You know, she, um, you know, she gently pushed me. She, um, she, she, she she strove to, you know, make me better. And, you know, I really appreciate that. 
Okay. Okay. That's terrific. So my very last question, so many people have asked this in the stream, um, and then we're going to slowly close out the program with a couple of cool announcements. Again, you're listening to The Color of Science. This is our digital edition where once a month, first Thursday of every month, we interview a fascinating person in the color of science spectrum. The last question that a lot of people want to know about is, hey, you're gifted. Your brain is super powerful. You're into science. You're into engineering. You're going to have an amazing career. You're going to probably set up your own company for aerospace science. Do you like sports? Well, that's a tough question. I definitely like playing sports, um, mm -hmm. watching it. I, I, lo I like watching soccer, definitely. I like playing and watching soccer. I like playing baseball. I do not like watching baseball. Watching baseball is boring to me. <laughs> football, um, I like watching football. Don't like playing football. Uh, fencing, love watching it and playing it as um, both, you know, they're, it's, I think that's what really drew me to it because, you know, um, they move at extremely fast speeds with swords. So <laughs> that's, that's really fun. So, yeah, I, I, I'd say that I like sports a little less than, you know, the average kid. But um, I, do, I do think that, you know, I enjoy watching and playing sports. Well, Mr. Caleb Anderson, it's been an absolute pleasure. I have no doubts you're going to soar through Georgia Tech for undergrad and get your master's. I have no doubts you're going to walk into MIT and get that PhD that you want in aerospace engineering. It's an absolute pleasure to meet you. And I got to tell you, for someone so gifted, so smart, so talented, you're also really well-rounded. And it's been a pleasure to chat with you. I want you to stick around because I'm going to start to close the program. Again, I want to thank all of our sponsors that make this possible. Um, L Brands, um, the Curtis Jewel and Beverly Foundation, CAS, Honda. Um, we're just so happy that you're supporting this program. This is the color size. I also want to talk to you that they're telling you that this is brought to you by Cosi Connects. So go to cosi.org, get a set of free, um, incredible STEM resources for you to use. Unbelievable, cool stuff, including and especially our science kits. We have these great handheld boxes. We deliver them right to your home, giving you that science immersion experience where you live, learn, and lounge. So go to cosi.org and shop our menu, buy the kits, check out our cool free content. Um, another cool program brought to you by the Color Science. Now, the best part is, you know, we have a competition. So I have to share my screen before I close out. Every month we have a competition and the competition is called the STEAM Challenge. And as you can see right here, this week's question or competition topic is, now that you heard Kat, Caleb Anderson, now that you met Manuel Guzman, um, what does a scientist look like to you? Okay, and what you have to do is you have to just send a photo of your favorite um, artwork depicting what a scientist looks like. So you can draw something on paper, you can paint something, you can get fancy with it, you can do it just in pencil but draw or take a photo of an artwork that you drew that represents what a scientist looks like to you. Because again, the color of science is a program that brings you the universe and diverse populations of men and women that make up the great scientists that make our lives much better. So definitely check that out. When you do that, you submit it as you see on the screen, take a screenshot with your phone, pull it out right now, vbowers at cosi.org. That's vbowers at cosi.org. Send it in by February 8th, and we don't mess around. We have really cool prizes. First prize, you get an iPad mini. Second prize, you get a hologram machine. And the third prize are some of those cool kits at cosiconnects.org or cosi.org. You can get these cool kits um, as a third prize winner. We have a space kit, a dinosaur kit, a water kit, a nature kit, and a, and a human body kit. Really cool stuff. Definitely do that. This has been a phenomenal program. And then lastly, I always give a shout out to the school. I gotta give a shout out to Mrs. Vasilla. She's a fifth grade class teacher at Walnut Creek Elementary School. To her students, Alex and all the crew out there, thanks for being part of this program. With that, Mr. Caleb Anderson, an absolute pleasure to have you on this program. Mr. Manny Guzman, a pleasure to have you on. Stay tuned, next February, first Thursday of the month, we'll have another inspiring guest for you. This is Frederick Bertley, President and CEO of COSI, checking out right now. Have a great day and ha happy 2021 to everyone.